let's go. Yeah. For this play, this is where we wanted it. Back, looks, throws, and yes. yes. Caught! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! They did it! We're celebrating a Week 9 Detroit Lions win right here on Inside the Pride, presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and airing across the Lions TV network. I'm your host, Danny Rogers. Three interceptions coming from rookies and a big-time fourth-quarter stop by the defense proved to be the game-changers as the Lions fought their way to a 15-9 win over the Green Bay Packers. Coming up, we'll break down that win and look ahead to another divisional matchup with Chicago. Plus, we'll take a look back at safety Kirby Joseph's draft journey to Detroit, the rookie who picked off Aaron Rodgers twice last Sunday. First, though, let's head out to Ford Field to relive the sights and sounds from Week 9. It's game day in downtown Detroit. Lions are looking to snap a five-game losing streak to do that. They'll have to beat one of their friends from the NFC North. The Green Bay Packers are in. They've had their own difficulties. They have lost four in a row as they get set for this one. So two teams both desperately in need of a win. It all comes down to executing. It all comes down to just trusting your, your teammates out there, uh, being on the same page, and just going out there and executing. Packers first and goal. They give it to Dylan. Nope, Rodgers throws it. It's up in the air, and it is picked off by the Lions. Kirby Joseph was under it to make the grab. Oh, baby, how big is that? Fourth and a long one for Green Bay. Rodgers moves in behind center, takes the snap, fakes the give, rolls, throws back against his body, intercepted by the Lions. Aiden Hutchinson with a pick. Down into the end zone, he goes for a touchback. The rookie out of Michigan comes up with a play. Rodgers tried to go misdirection. Hutchinson said, I'll take that. Second down on the fake. Rodgers steps back. Can't find anyone. Now he's going to be sacked for a big loss. Another big play from Derek Barnes. He's had a huge impact in this game. Wow, the pressure coming from Gary. Gets rid of it. Kennedy makes a move up across midfield and in the Packers area. And then a thrown out of bounds way late by Jair Alexander. That's just a silly penalty. It's going to be 15 more for the Lions. Goff fakes the give this time. Wants to throw into wide open court. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Goff takes the snap turn, gives to Jamal. He's in there. Two point conversion. That's the end of the half. 8 0 Detroit. That is our score. So the defense will be right back at it. And the defense, look, they've given up some yards, but they have buckled down when they've had to and come up with a couple of takeaways. Third and 11 for Green Bay. Rodgers is back, looks, throws deep downfield, wants Lazard, knocked away. Terrific play by Kirby Joseph. That's how you play in the secondary in the NFL. at big time stuff. Rodgers leans in, there's the snap, he's back. Rodgers looking, looking, throws deep middle. Picked up by the Lions, coming back the other way, Kirby Joseph again. How about that rookie, he is something else. Oh, baby, how big is that? The throws, end zone, caught, touchdown, that's Lazard. Packers on the board for the first time today. So 8-6, Lions lead, Packers will go for two. Try and tie it up for Green Bay. On the move, looking Lazard again. It's knocked away by Okuda. Lions leading by two. Got to get something going offensively here. Goff over the middle. Caught! Amon Ross St. Brown turns the corner inside the 20. And a big gain to Amon Ross St. Brown. Goff empty out of the gun. He's got it back. Looks, looks, throws, end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! James Mitchell, hey rookie, welcome to Detroit. That's your first NFL touchdown. And it is now Detroit 15 and Green Bay 9. Work left to do. And there's the snap. Blitz comes. They pick it up. Goff looks, throws. It is incomplete. And Green Bay is going to have it back now with a chance to win this game. So it's one play for the game, fellas. This building is alive. Five, six, zero again. Rodgers back. He's got it. Looking, looking. Pressure throws it up for grabs in the end it's zone. Complete. Incomplete. Ball game over. Boys, let's get out of here. Man.
man, did this team need that. Plenty of firsts in Sunday's win, like defensive end Aiden Hutchinson's first ever interception and linebacker Derek Barnes' first game with a combined 12 tackles. He was a ball magnet against the Packers. Hear from the second year Lion coming up next. Inside the Pride is presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and sponsored by Priority Health, Kroger, and by Henry Ford Health. Salute to Service is the NFL's year-round commitment to honor, empower, and connect with our nation's service members, veterans, and their families. This week, the Detroit Lions partnered with the Stronger Warrior Foundation. Our mission is to help active and retired military members. We send care packages overseas to deployed military men and women, and we have volunteers decorate the outside of the crate to really make it personalized. Lions staff, players, coaches, and military members gathered at Ford Field and the Allen Park practice facility to pack crates for care packages that will be sent overseas. We just package up some gifts, some of the veterans, some of the guys over there fighting for us, for our freedom. You know, we had the opportunity to send over some things to make their day. Families from TAPS also met with Lions players who wore fallen service members' initials on their helmets during the salute to service game against the Green Bay Packers. Derek, after a Green Bay win, what was your favorite part and why was it when you guys hoisted Aaron Glenn up in the locker room during your celebration? Just seeing how excited the guys were, it kind of touched me. And, you know, I kind of got emotional after the game because I'm like, this is something that we've been fighting for for a long time. And, you know, coming on from coming to a one and six season and you get that win against a really good quarterback, a really good team, you know, it's exciting. And especially when you know the type of work that these guys have been putting in day in and day out. Tries the middle of the line, he didn't get it. Hammered, lost the Woo. yard, back to the two. Derek Barnes. Barnes playing yes. like a missile out there, knocking Dylan backwards. It'll be fourth and goal for the Packers. The goal line stop that you had, I remember watching it. You ran straight to midfield, celebrating. You were so excited. <laughs> Everyone else was like, Derek, hello, get back You're in the right. game. What was going through your mind with all that emotion? Oh, man. I love making plays like that, especially in critical situations like that on the goal line. That's a big play. He's mano y mano, especially with a big back like that. You know, he is huge. 250 pound running back is, is like all he has to do is just fall in the end zone. And I knew like, okay, I got to make this play on the other side because it's the only gap that's open, which is my gap. And, you know, I just told myself like, if you don't make this play, you, you know, you suck. So that's what I told myself, you, you got to make this play. But no, it was a... Uh, I just, I just had to lay it out on the line for the guys, and, and that's what I wanted to do. So, Looks, looks, now in trouble, going to get hit, going to go down. Sack back outside the 50-yard line. Derek Barnes got it. We're high in tackles. You had a sack. Everywhere the ball was, you were. And everyone talks about the growth from year one to year two. What growth have you experienced here now through nine weeks? Yeah, I would just say my confidence level. Uh, you know, after the Philly game, when I had the worst game I ever had in my life, uh, it kind of, you know, put me in a, in a dark place uh, at a certain point, but I just had to remember, remember my why. Like, what did it take for me to get here? And, you know, I just had to go back to college because when I was in college, I was just out having fun. Just nothing in the world meant more to me was just going out and playing for the guys next to me. And, and I had to get back in that moment and then also keep faith. You know, I prayed a lot, and which I already do, but, you know, I kind of sat down and talked to God and just kept pushing. And, I couldn't have did it without the guys believing me, my coach believing in me, the players in my room, the defense, and everybody knew what I was capable of doing. And, and they showed that nobody was, was down on me, you know, nobody was, you know, like, oh, we can't depend on Derek and, and all that. But everybody just kept me positive and, you know, it paid off. And I'm excited I got, got to go out there and, and help my team win. So I can imagine the support system has been great. That includes new fiance. Yes. Kylie, you managed to, uh, Get, get a little engagement going here during the season. Yeah. What's more nerve wracking, proposing to fiance Kylie or a, a very pivotal third down goal line stop? Uh, <laughs> I would say the goal line stop was more, and I would say that because I always knew I was gonna marry her. Okay. And it was like- Nice cover. Yeah, I knew I was gonna marry her and I knew we were gonna, you know, take our life to the next level. Um, yeah, the goal line stop was like, it's just nerve, it's exciting. Cause like, okay, this is my opportunity to make a big play. And you know, with a guy like, like a running back like that, it's like, okay, it's now it's, it's time to see who be in the weight room. And, mm -hmm. and I know when I seen him in the hole, I was like, 
yeah, this, this can go one other way. And, you know, I wanted to be positive, so I had to give them all. You mentioned having fun while you're playing out there. How do you make sure you're having fun next week against the Chicago Bears when you see quarterback Justin Fields runs for over 170 yards in the prior matchup? I would just say that's something that we have to, you know, game plan around. You kind of tell that's what they want to do. Uh, he's a great running quarterback, great passing quarterback, so you kind of got to be prepared for both. Um, and I know the coach is going to have a great plan for him, for him, and, you know, I'm excited about this week. It's a big week and a big challenge for us this week, so I'm excited to see where that takes us. Welcome back to Inside the Pride. Now joined by the head coach, Stan Campbell. And, Coach, this time last week you were talking about your players saying enough is enough and setting a new standard. What standard did they set in that win against the Green Bay Packers? Well, look, you know, we did a number of things right. Ultimately, we made the play we had to make to win the game as opposed to the other way, man. It was one less play we made and we lose. We made the play that, that we had to make. We made a number of plays, but, uh, you know, and the guys uh, – you know, that's the best defensive performance we've had, you know, and, and I really felt like as a whole, that's the best we played as a team. Offense, defense, special teams, we all complemented each other. Defense will have to bring in again against these Chicago Bears. Justin Fields, quarterback, you already mentioned him earlier this week, 178 yards on the ground as quarterback. What does your defense need to do to contain him from doing what you're about to show us? Yeah, look, they, they've done a good job over the last three weeks. They really, since they're by, they've catered this uh, offense around him. Everything starts with him. I'll just show this from behind. They got him in third and seven. This is where he's doing a lot of damage. You got what you want. All right, you got a chance to get off the field. Man, if you give him a lane and his first progression is not there, he's running. And uh, once he gets through this, uh, this is where he's very dangerous because he's pretty slippery, uh, he's agile, and he's got speed. And, and this is what this whole tape looked like on third down. I mean, it, it's, uh, it requires you to have to be very disciplined on your rush patterns. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know the Chicago Bears like to run it. In that receiving core, they bolstered it a little bit. Wide receiver Chase Claypool at the trade deadline. He's getting his legs under him, but Darnell Mooney has been doing it for three years for the Bears, and he's making some really impressive catches like you're about to show us. Yeah. What does your secondary need to be on alert for? Yeah, well, look, I think it still goes back to what we did last week. we got to challenge these guys. And Mooney, you're right, he's got a pretty uh, extensive route tree here. But he can make plays in the middle of the field. He can make plays over over your head. Uh, he can run the daggers. He can do it all. Uh, and he's got pretty good catch radius, you know. So he's somebody you, you can't sleep on him. Just because they got Claypool, they got a pretty good tight end. They've got a group of receivers. But, I mean, look at this catch. That's a hell of a catch. Um, so, yeah. We, but I think, ultimately, you got to attack him at the line of scrimmage. Defensively for the Bears, it feels weird not talking about Roquan Smith or Robert Quinn. So you have to talk about Pro Bowl safety. Eddie Jackson leads a team in interceptions. What does your pass game need to be on alert for? Well, I think it says a lot with all the good players that have been there that aren't there anymore. He's the one holdover. And so I think that says a lot about how they feel about him and what he brings to this defense. Uh, He's always been, in my opinion, a guy that he's a very crafty, smart, rangy safety that's a ball guy. He finds the football, and, uh, and this is a good look at it. Man, He'll just read the quarterback. He knows the patterns that are coming, and he's pretty dangerous with the ball in his hand like you see here after he gets a pick. So certainly we we got to be in tune for where he's at, and we can't let him take a game over. You already mentioned a couple times this week this could be a really great opportunity for your first road win as a head coach for the Lions. What is the most important thing your team has to do to make that happen? Yeah, look, I think a, a lot of it is what we talked about last week, man, discipline. we got to be very disciplined to do uh, – to do our job inside the game plan that, that we feel like it'll be designed to beat this team. So this quarterback's a problem, man, and the run game's a problem. We get gap responsibility. We have to ch challenge on the perimeter. And then offensively, man, we have to be very efficient on first down. We're going to have to be able to run this football, which will set up everything else. Inside the Pride, presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort, is taking a break. Coming up next, we share how rookie safety Kirby Joseph, a.k.a. the turnover machine, landed here in Detroit. We'll be right back. The rookie prospects that general manager Brad Holmes drafted this past year are collectively making an impact every week now. And that includes safety Kirby Joseph, who had a week nine breakout performance against the Green Bay Packers. Let's take a look back at Kirby's draft story. Hey, I don't know if he makes it. No, I doubt Kirby, we were had his name up there for 46. He just, his name just stayed up there. Kirby Joseph, how about that? I had it on this little sheet of paper, and I just kept starting. You like mm -hmm. Second round went through. 
And then it was like, you know, now I'm just waiting. It is a long wait, you know, waiting 50 picks or whatever it is to see if we're going to be able to get him. Out of this, you know, I think it was like 10 players, you know, who are you going to kind of be like, damn it, you know, hated to see him go away. And Kirby's name just kept coming up. Lance kept bringing his name up and then he just said, you know, Kirby's one of my favorite guys in this draft. And so Lance has his information there by his laptop. And then I'm like looking over and Lance like, don't jinx it, don't jinx it, don't jinx it, don't jinx it. When, when we were getting close, just knowing that, that there was a possibility, I felt very strongly that we were gonna get him at that point. We get to 96 and we're like, okay, his name is still up there, all right. And the Colts move up and jump in front of us. When I saw Indianapolis trade up to that spot, I had a good feeling that they weren't gonna take him. I'm seeing everybody getting their picks and I don't give up hope. I see that, you know, I got the Colts and I got the Lions coming up. I sat back and I closed my eyes and I just said a prayer. The Indianapolis Colts select Nick Cross, defensive back. Yeah. 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 Indianapolis selected Nick Cross and uh, hard to describe, but it was a good moment. Nick Cross comes off and then we get Kirby in. I just started staring at my phone and then um, out of nowhere, it just lights up. It says Detroit, Michigan. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, oh. It's Brad Holmes, Jim with Detroit Lions. How you doing, man? Doing good. And he was like, Kirby, uh, you tired of waiting? Oh, I'm sorry. And then he told me that he was going to grab me um, in the upcoming pick. <laughs> just seeing that phone call just filled me with so much joy. I had like, wow, like this is actually going to happen. Like, my dream is finally going to come true. With the 97th pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Kirby Joseph, defensive back, Illinois. I'm being blessed to receive that phone call that night, surrounded by my whole family, my friends, and it was just, it was just an amazing experience. Being surrounded by all that love and support. All the work that we put in, it's just, it's good to see when the stars align and those guys land for you. All signs pointed toward Kirby making some big plays. Back-to-back -back weeks of forced fumbles against Dallas and Miami. Prescott's back, wants to throw, does complete Noah Brown. Oh. Lost the football free on the ground. The Lions have picked it up at the two-yard line. That is Detroit football. And he's rewarded with two interceptions against Green Bay. It was tough for Kirby to take in his efforts, though. He went into concussion protocol later in the game, and we'll know more about his status as we approach Sunday's matchup against Chicago. Inside the Pride is taking a break. Up next, it's Rogers Retweets. Don't go anywhere. Before we go here on Inside the Pride, it's time for Rogers Retweets, where I retweet some of my favorite social media clips from this past week. And I'll tell you, this segment is a lot more fun to do after a Detroit Lions win. And we have to throw it back to earlier this week when offensive lineman Penny Sewell welcomed baby boy Malachi to the Detroit Lions family. Congrats to Mama Isabel. Taylor Decker also just welcomed a baby about a week ago. So a lot of new Cubs added to the Detroit Lions family. And speaking of family, it was a really special day for the Zilster brothers. Both elevated off of the practice squad against Green Bay. Wide receiver Brandon, tight end Shane. I love it. This is awesome to see them take the field out there together. And this is one of my favorite stories from this past week. Everyone say hello to Jeremiah, a.k.a. Juju Millard. He was participating in the Detroit Lions youth football game. This happens after the Detroit Lions, the big guys, leave the field. The little ones come to play. That wraps up this edition of Rogers Retweets. Make sure you use that hashtag and I'll be sure to feature you on next week's show. That wraps up Inside the Pride here today. A reminder, Detroit Lions square off against the Chicago Bears this Sunday. Kickoff is slated for 1 p.m. We'll see you there.